Hi, my name is David Yan. I'm a chemistry major at Case Western Reserve University, and I'll be presenting on computational modeling of multiple sheets of graphene oxide at the liquid-liquid interface. Prior research has indicated that graphene oxide helps to stabilize emulsions and bubbles. And for those of you that are unfamiliar, graphene is effectively multiple benzene rings fused together into a single sheet, while graphene oxide is merely the oxidized form of graphene, where some of these double bonds have been replaced with alcohol groups and epoxides, and the edges have been replaced with carboxylic acids. Emulsions and bubbles play a crucial role in a wide range of fields, including but not exclusive to drug delivery, insecticide targeting, and surface catalysis. In the figure above, you can see that Graphene oxide has been used to stabilize air and water, liquid liquid, and liquid solid. In the case of air and water, you can see that the graphene oxide helps to stabilize CO2 bubbles and water. In the liquid liquid, you can see that it helps to stabilize oil and water. And in the case of a liquid solid, it helps to stabilize the dispersion of an insoluble material throughout the deionized water. As you can see on the left, the graphene oxide shows dispersion, while on the right, you see that the solid merely sinks to the bottom and does not disperse. Prior computational research of graphene provides a framework to investigate graphene oxide. On the figure to the right, you can see that there is a density plot taken of water, graphene, and heptanes. As expected, water has approximately a density of around 1, and heptanes has approximately a density around 7. Interestingly, near the interface, you can see that there's a spike of density, which represents the graphene, where green is 4 sheets, purple is 3 sheets, blue is 2 sheets, and red is 1 sheet. As you can see, as the number of sheets increases, the density increases, which is what you would expect because there's more graphene at the interface. Well, it's interesting, you can see that the graphene doesn't actually interface directly at the interface. The graphene chooses to be within the oil solution a little bit away from the interface. But as you add more sheets, additional sheets stack on top of each other and move towards the interface. This might be similar to what we would expect in graphene oxide, but the further functionalization of adding of groups like alcohols and epoxides might drag it closer to the water phase as opposed to the heptane phase because it is more polar. For a project, we decided to use dissipative particle dynamics for modeling the graphene oxide. So the first step was to utilize a proprietary software to model the fluid-fluid interface. In our case, we decided to use a software provided by Dr. Hoare from Case Western Reserve University. A second step was to model different emiscible solutions interfaces without graphene oxide present, which was completed prior in prior steps during the summer. The third step, which is what we're still currently in progress in, is to model emiscible solution positions with the presence of many sheets of graphene oxide and modified graphene oxide act for equilibrium. As you can see, once again, the basic idea is that the graphene oxides will sit at the interface of the water and the oil or air, and you would see that the free energy is such that it's minimized at the interface as opposed to being dissolved within the water solution. And the fourth step, which is what we hope to achieve as once additional research is put in after the ORU project, we'd like to compare the graphene position before and after equilibrium. So for primers, I decided to define it such that we'd always be investigating the sheet size effects on the graphene oxide, and we predicted that graphene oxide sheet size would not alter the priority to interface between the two different fluids. As you can see, there are three different beads, the blue beads, the gray beads, and the red beads. The blue and the gray are two arbitrary solution beads, and the red beads are the graphene oxide beads, which are the ones that we're actually interested in. As you can see, I defined it to be that there is a total of 1,000 beads, such that 5 by 2 means that there's 10 beads and there's 100 sheets, so you end up with 1,000 beads. Similarly, if you did a sheet that's 10 by 10, instead you only do 10 sheets. And so you always want to keep the total number of beads the same so that the concentration isn't changing, just the sheet size that is changing. And so when I say it's 10 by 10, what that literally means is that there would be 10 beads across and 10 beads wide. 
And so our first result, you can see these are sheets that are relatively large. This sheet happens to be 10 by 10. And so you can see from the isometric view and the ZY direction view, the sheets lie approximately at the interface. And in this case, you see that now there's only a blue and gray haze. It was just done this way so you could easily see the sheets at the interface as opposed to just seeing the particles in the way, which isn't what you're actually interested in observing. And so you can see that the beads approximately travel towards around 35. Now that is what we would expect because this box is 70 by 70 by 70. So since half of the solution is gray and half the solution is blue, approximately the 35 mark should be where the interface is. And so similarly, you can see that the beads Z direction is approximately around 35 with the 10 sheets of size 10 by 10 units. And so you can see that the standard deviation is relatively low, which indicates they're all approximately very close to the 35 mark, as would be expected. Next, here is an example of a similar solution, but in this case, the beads are now 5 by 2 instead. As you can see from the overview, there's a lot more sheets involved, but also you can see from the ZX and the ZY, that there are now actually beads that are not directly at the interface. There are now some that are floating in both the blue and gray solutions. So as you can see, once again, most of the sheets are at the interface around 35, but you can see that there are from the Z position some sheets that are both below and above, as expected. You have one sheet that is around 30 below, and you end up with what appears to only be two sheets, with one near 50 and one near 40. But in reality, the 41, you can see that the sheets are have both approximately around 40, so they're actually overlapping, so you don't see the two different sheets, but there are two sheets at the 40, approximately. So once again, you see that average is still very close to 35, but in this case, the standard deviation is greater, since there are some outliers, and so those outliers increase the standard deviation, indicate that some of the sheets in this case do not always stick at the interface, but sometimes actually leave the interface and dissolve within the solutions. And so one of the conclusions we drew was that graphene oxide does not appear to be affected by size and interfaces between the fluids regardless. The interfacing appears to be preferred regardless of size. And so some of our future directions will be to allocate additional resources to further quantify the data that we have, repeat the model using different conditions, including but not exclusive to graphene oxide shape, graphene oxide size, solvent polarity, and graphene oxide functionality. And of course, always continue the literature search to find further directions for our project. I'd like to acknowledge the NSF grant that was provided for this research and the ORU at Texas A&M. I'd like to also finally acknowledge my collaborators, Dr. Emily Penser, Dr. Crystal Worth, Dr. Mike Hoare, fellow ORU student, Allison Kennedy, and Sierra Cipriani, who will be the graduate student that will be taking over this project as the ORU winds down. Thank you.